All right, so um, fiscal year budget development, right? So again, uh, you had had the preliminary budget presented to you in, in mid December. Um, uh, I would expect you to have memorized every page since then. A lot of detail, a lot of materials. But it would be helpful if you have some um, preliminary thoughts or, or areas of concern or questions. Um, it would be good to flush some of those out so that we can um, get back to you with with more details and and perhaps need for more data if that if that is uh, helpful. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in hearing from folks what areas of the budget uh, that you may have concerns about or that you want to take a deeper dive into. And uh, obviously I've, I've highlighted um, a few key areas, uh, public safety staffing, uh, the school budget, we, we just finished a round of discussion on that. Um, and, uh, and, and finalizing uh, wages for, for 24. Those are, are three outstanding areas that I know we need to, to um, have further discussions and make some final decisions on. Uh, but beyond that, if, if there are other areas that, that you have concerns about or have particularly interest in, uh, it would be helpful knowing that. I'll bring mine in when I meet you about the other two things. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody have anything specific they wanted to discuss right now or meet with Greg? Mm, yeah, I just might bring up in, um, in the uh, safety budget with the police. I'm trying to get my head around head count associated with uh, the salary budgets seems to be very similar from one year to the next that I'm not sure where the dispatch headcount was and where it is. Is that still in the budget for 2024 or is that removed? Uh, the dispatch salaries are removed. So that's, okay. why, you don't, that's why you see the, the police budget salary basically being level funded. Because, well, actually, it dropped a bit because of that. Well, it dropped removed. just a little bit and that was a three or four headcount person, uh, people count, right? Yeah, I, I think, Greg, the, um, what we had discussed when we met jointly with FENCOM was that we should have some, we should claim the savings that we mm -hmm. project. Exactly. And I, mm -hmm. I suggested a waterfall chart. I yep. still think a waterfall chart would be a good way of showing that. Um, but we have to claim those savings and understand where they went because those heads are going to be gone. Because yeah, you said that that show what the savings. It shows were, what the savings the whole is. Story, not yes. just the spending. That's right. The saving. Yes, you have yeah. to show the puts and takes. And mm -hmm. if you need any examples of that, let me know. But it's it's a standard thing. I'm sure the FinCon people. Um, yeah. Know what that is. That, that was really the driver behind that. I'm trying to right. figure out where that several hundred thousand dollars right. went. Exactly. And what did you have to? And, and um, the, I think it's important to, to John's point to have the public safety budget, if, if they were all under the police department, then the police department should show that savings. I believe that the prior select board made it very clear that those savings were not necessarily going to stay in, in, the, in the bucket where they were being claimed. Yeah. And so I think that's the point here. If, if, the, you know, if the chief is using some of that money already, that's, that's, you know, that's a board decision. Um, so along those lines, um, I, I think it would also just be helpful, the questions that um, you raise, Greg, um, you know, are there services you feel are not providing high value? Okay. Um, uh, are there specific uh, services that could be delivered less expensively? I expect the town department heads to come to us with answers to those questions. Okay, that's their job to um, identify services that are underutilized. So when I when we go to these finance meetings on Thursdays, I'm going to be looking for what are the benchmarks and which services in your area are underutilized because everybody's got something. Um, 
and uh, these days every penny counts. Mm -hmm. So I, I would like to see their thoughts that we can then take a look at and, and see, um, you know, see what's what. Anybody else? One more question. Um, again, in safety, just in the harbor area, um, I, I did note uh, a one-liner here. There's no protection for the three vessels in winter time. I guess they're just hauled up to the, uh, I, guess, I guess, the water treatment plant, and they sit there in the lot. Are they shrink wrapped at all, or is there something? I, I, I saw that there was the expectation or hope there'd be some sort of storage facility, but shrink wrapping works pretty well. You know, Greg? Yeah, let, let me talk to Mario about that. Okay. Yeah. I understand yeah. he's lobbying for a roof, but shrink wrapping is not very expensive. And there's a lot of boats in white every winter, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And oh, Good. and there's a lot of plastic that goes into the trash. Well, true. Yeah. <laughs> the, and the roof stays mm -hmm. to be used again and again and again. Right. It's a it's a cost issue too. Just yep. you know, shrink wrapping's a few hundred dollars. And... Well, that's for the one time, but the long term. Long term. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that's, we can get that information from Bion. Um, all right, so did you want to, I wondered if we had, that should go on our list of actions so we don't forget about it. Good idea. Yeah, so this is Harbor Master, not under Harbor Master Plan. Update Harbor Master Plan. All right. Uh, it's gift wrapping boats. Harbor Master Equipment. All right. Um, so this came at one three, and we want to. Could we possibly have that for the next meeting? The information on that? Yeah, that, that's an easy one. That's a question. Yeah, that's just a question, right? Yes, it is. But it's now on there. Because you're right, we need to continue doing this. I love this. All right, so um, we reviewed goals, discussion, action steps, process. Uh, for finalizing some action steps and time frames. Now we're on to MBTA zoning. That's where. Yeah. So you should have a memo from me which outlines the basics of um, what the state is requiring. And um, what the state is requiring is uh, the town of Manchester to put roughly 37 acres in a zoning district that would allow housing by right um, with site plan review and site plan review can um, restrictions can be put on but they can't be unreasonable mm -hmm. um, and the goal is that the state wants more housing within uh, a half a mile of the MBTA station. Um, I have had several discussions um, given the uniqueness of Manchester and the fact that the train station is on Phil Tidelands. I've had several discussions with the state and they continue to believe that uh, there will be train running in uh, 20, 30, 40 years. And this is something that the state um, is mandating. The, there's, there's the carrot, I guess, is the housing. The, state, the stick is that if we don't put something in place, the state will eliminate um, housing authority funds and will prevent us from pursuing MassWorks and housing choice grants. 
So um, by the end of January, we are to fill out an action plan, which I am working on now um, with ultimately um, the goal of adopting um, zoning by uh, December of 2024. And um, so ironically, there is no requirement for actually production of this housing. Um, but the state is adamant that this is what they want. So we've outlined um, some, some preliminary timelines. Um, as, as Betsy indicated, we have basically we have a two year window to answer a lot of questions, to collect data, answer a lot of questions, and have a lot of community debate on this topic. Um, it, it, it's a topic that already has garnered quite a bit of uh, opinions and, and debate in town already. And uh, no doubt that will continue um, as we as we go through this process, um, the as you as you have talked about in previous meetings, um, we'll be doing parallel tracks, looking at what it would take to comply, and also um, what are the ramifications of not complying, uh, not not just um, foregoing some of the grant uh, possibilities, but um, you know what sort of impact does that have on the community. Um, in terms of our demographics and, and the types of housing that we currently have or don't have. Um, so it'll be um, a very important and I think dynamic process over the next over the next two years. The, the kicking it off hopefully will be your joint meeting with the planning board next week. Um, so after you have your, your session about choosing a a new planning board member to fill a vacancy. You'll move into a discussion about the timelines. We'll have um, refine the timelines and the and the narratives and the overviews. We'll have that all available and, and to folks um, the Thursday before uh, this. We'll have it ready hopefully this Thursday to get out to everybody in preparation for Monday's meeting. Um, so as I said, this will this will be a major focus. Um, it'll take a lot of energy. It'll take um, gathering a lot of good information. Um, for, for example, we already have on the books zoning that allows by right the conversion of a, of a single family home into three, three units um, in the general district. And so that's on 6,000 6, square feet. So that's a density of 21 units per acre, whereas the state is, is requesting um, a minimum of 15 units per acre. So in theory, we are already meeting that requirement with that one area. It's not for new construction, so it doesn't fully meet the requirements of the new law. Um, so we've had that on the books for, for a long time in Manchester, and we have certainly haven't seen uh, a huge proliferation of conversions take place. Um, so there's, there's those kind of facts uh, that we need to get out. Um, we, we certainly have um, multifamily housing in the village area that that is um, upwards of oh, maybe as high as 40 or 50 units an acre, um, if you were to project it out. Um, so again, a lot of information to collect, a lot of data to share um, and to vet and to have um, what I hope will be a very robust community discussion um, does this make sense or not for Manchester? Um, and that's that's what we need to do over the next two years um, and take our time and be methodical and, and be deliberate about it and, and come up with a good solution that, that is um, that fits Manchester. Um, thank you. I, I, I would like all of this um, is Nice and clear, Betsy, thank you very much. Lots of information. Um, I did on the projected timeline. Um, one of the things Kathy had mentioned last time was um, also make the, the, the projected timeline is specifically for going forward. And there's nothing that we're, we're making comment about if we don't go forward. 
Um, and I think we need to have, um, with these timelines, if we choose not to meet a deadline, what specifically that means for us. I think um, uh, maybe Tiffany may have already spoken with Susan Beck. I know Susan Beckman was helping Tiffany with some of the graphics. I think the graphics came from Tiffany. And um, a number of us had sent Tiffany some feedback mm -hmm. uh, on the timeline. Yep. And I think we just need to wait. Susan's got her hand up. Uh, we just may need to see another version. Yes. Yeah, she's, she's working on that. We'll be, okay. Uh, we'll I just, new, you'll see that new version in, the, in a couple of days. All right. Yeah, we talk about that next step. Work. I just wanted to make sure that that is... That is a key element, I think, is to show that we are looking at other, not just the one option. Susan, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, Greg, Greg said it. We're working on it. We got that feedback loud and clear. So the next version, you'll see that. Thank you. <clears throat> and have we considered pushing up the um, town meeting vote? to um, April. Of 24? Yeah. So that if it doesn't work, we get a second shot. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yep. Yeah. Not that the second shots always work, but. Right. So do an April, yep. Yeah, the spring or, town or, meeting or, or the. Maybe have a, a town meeting in very early June. June. Yeah. Specific to this. Mm. Betsy? Um, we are likely going to apply um, for a um, MAPC grant to uh, for a couple of people to help us with some number crunching and mapping. Mm -hmm. um, I think it makes total sense to um, move this forward fairly quickly this year and see if we can do some form of educational program that leads to spring uh, 2024 town meeting. Um, so we do have a second bite at the apple. Thank you. Good call, Anne. My, my other question is the um, historic district, um, the two historic districts, have a lot of regulations about what can be built, um, particularly height. But um, does this, is the state willing to take into consideration our regulations to keep our historic district intact? No. <laughs> Thank you. Straightforward. Really? Oh. <laughs> Sarah? Creighton? Um, <clears throat> well, we don't need to get into the specifics of the program tonight, but I do think it's important that it's. A, it's a region-wide goal, and so the historic, if we can't meet the density requirements in the historic district, they wouldn't be able to be made up elsewhere in the overlay, in a, perhaps an overlay zone or something. But nonetheless, my point was gonna be, um, I think as you think about this and you talk about it with people, as we talk about it with people, right now this is a, yes, it's a, uh, mandate with uh, a stick if we don't comply by the deadline. But nonetheless, it also is consistent with our master plan, and it is an opportunity to, uh, the master plan said focus on the downtown and its character as well as its vitality. Um, the master plan said focus on a diversity of housing, um, and so this is also an opportunity to meet some of those master plan goals. And so I think um, I would couch Betsy's comments uh, as being factually correct, but in terms of tone, I would say, let's start with thinking of this as an opportunity that the state is twisting our arm a little bit to, to, to hurry up and do, but I think it has an opportunity for us to collectively think about what we want uh, in the area um, the 37 acres or so um, near the, the train station. So um, start with it as an opportunity to think about it and then um, what might that be and what are the trade-offs? Because I think Greg's point also is that we're quite close. It's uh, um, it's not like we have single family house districts 
throughout the entire downtown. We have a lot of uh, area that has three family um, allowed by right. We have, a, you know, more, as yeah. you said, more than um, the required density on some parcels, which we could rezone to allow that to be rebuilt, and that would count towards the average. So we're, we're quite close, um, I think, compared to a lot of other communities, and it is an opportunity. And lastly, this is about zoning, and as we know, zoning does not necessarily mean it will get built. Mm -hmm. so, so just a suggestion for communicating, um, Betsy and um, Tiffany, as we're creating collateral to um, inform the public about what the requirement is, you, you said it, it means we need 37 acres of by right multifamily zoning, blah, blah, blah. I'm envisioning like a fundraising thermometer, okay? The target is 37 acres, and once you get through the technical details, how close are we? You know, are we at 34? Are we at 20? It would be nice to have a visual mm -hmm. that as we, uh, you know, if our target is clear and we propose a change in zoning, hey, that'll take us from 20 to 32, and we just need a little more to go. That, that kind of visual can be very mm -hmm. um, motivating. Um, and, and put what we're trying to do in a positive light as yeah. opposed to a negative yeah. light. So yeah. I would just think about that type of collateral, perhaps. Um, I think I the visuals, yeah. sorry, John. I, I just think the visuals are really critical. Yeah. Boil them down, Real make simple. it very <clears throat> easy to see. John, what did you want to Yeah, so <clears throat> one thing that has always confused me in all, all of this stuff, I'm trying to understand, 37 year acres, and the first time I saw 37 was when this memo came out. I knew the number went down. I didn't know what it went down to. Mm -hmm. That's 555 units based upon 50, mm -hmm. 15 mm -hmm. units per week. Now, to the extent that we meet those requirements with the housing that we already have, that gets subtracted from that 555? Supposedly. That's, that's what that's what that current state understanding. That's what we need. I, I'm, I'm hoping that's the situation. Yeah. We've got a lot of three family zone mm -hmm. stuff down in the general district that that's, you start to look at it and you, you can start to run the numbers up. Okay. We need town council. This is where we need town council right. to weigh in. It's a very, this very is, important distinction. Absolutely. Because okay. that's what I think we've been led to believe, but we need to know. Right. Without a doubt. There, there's a little bit of information that has come out from the state. Mm -hmm. um, one is that each, if we zone a section, it has to be at least five acres. Mm -hmm. So we can't just say, this house is good, this house is good, this house is good. It has to be contiguous. It has to be five acres. Five acres contiguous. Mm -hmm. We have to have 15 acres within the half mile zone of the train station. Right, right. And if you go to the town website and go to the mapping and turn on colors for um, flood zone, mm -hmm. uh, hurricane danger zone, um, and the historic district, which I now know doesn't matter, I guess, mm -hmm. um, you, it's Finding scattered pieces of five acres is is challenging in that area, um, but uh, I, obviously Greg and 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 Betsy think it can be done. Um, I'm going to be very interested to see when you know we come down to putting felt markers on mm -hmm. on a map. Um, yeah, it has to be gone through lot by lot. So this is but where it has to be in five acre yeah. hooks. Okay. So this is where that that's part of what is being looked at right now. So I'm I'm not sure that I think we need to get town council involved in this. I think we have a town planner who's very knowledgeable about this and can get to legal um, definitions and that we shouldn't try and circumvent her. No no no, that was not my intention. Oh, well okay, good. But no, it's, um, Betsy. Yeah. Do you um, do you know if that has been clarified whether what we have counts or not? Um, I do not know the answer to the question, but I will find out the answer to the question. Okay, because I yeah, that, that is critical. Um, 
I think that they're, uh, you know, in looking at the town center, they're, um, so the closest comparable is um, the powder house apartments on two acres, there's 29 units. Mm -hmm. So that's your density. Mm -hmm. um, and it turns out only about half that piece of property has been developed. So it's basically 30 units on an acre. Um, so that's kind of the closest um, comparable. There are uh, units in the center of town that have 13 units on a uh, 6,000 square foot lot. Mm -hmm. So um, clearly there are areas in town that have um, significantly greater density. Um, most of those units being built the turn of the century or a little later. Um, I will find out, uh, I'm in the process of digging, I will find out the answers to the question. And as I said, this is the first of many memos from right. me on this issue. Because we don't know whether these issues are age restricted or not, the ones that we have in place. And that's, so that's a... This conversation is confusing to me because it's my understanding the law is about the zoning not the structures that may or may not be there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think the question is, so the yeah, our zoning, the zoning has to does, the, the zoning has to comply. Right. It's irrelevant yeah. about what buildings may be in town right now. So as we go mm -hmm. forward here, I really think it's important not to talk about existing structures if we can avoid it because uh, I just think it adds to the confusion a little bit. But the problem with that is some of our zoning already does comply. Right, but so we can talk about the zoning without talking about the talking about Without talking about structures, you know, I see. Betsy, what do you, do you agree with that? Well, I think the issue is perception. When I first think of 15 units an acre mm -hmm. uh, in comparison with you know, what I perceive as Manchester, that doesn't quite fit. But then if you do the digging, you realize right. that there are areas in town that have greater, particularly in the town center, that have greater density than that, much greater density than that. So right. yeah, no, I think I, yeah. my reason for bringing up examples is to say, okay, this, this property is X units an acre. I, I think that's valid. The visual. Yeah, and it I think that's valuable. I would limit those examples to where they will help understanding as opposed to a liberal use of them because I think it diverts our focus to the fact uh, from the fact that there is absolutely no production required as part of mm -hmm. this law. Mm -hmm. It is simply yeah. zoning changes. And so the well, more we talk yeah. about buildings, it makes people think they're going to be immediate. You know, I'm just, I just, well, it's not the, focus, the same as 40B, yeah. and I think people get confused between production regulations versus zoning. The focus really has to be on the size of the lots. Yes. All of downtown exactly. is, three, is, is three units per lot. Now, if you've got 6,000 foot lot, you've got no problem. Right. The math works. You've got 8,000 foot lots, that's fine. If you've got a 15,000 foot lot, and it's still zoned in three family, mm -hmm. you got problems. Right. You're not gonna make the math work. So you just have to go through each lot, what's the size, the I know it's got a capacity of mm -hmm. three, and see if the math works. That's really what has to be done. So it really has to be lot by lot, and you have to be able to add it all up and, and get to that 15 per acre overall. Agreed. Okay, so with this, um, the board action is to announce the next steps. Um, Greg, I believe what the next steps are that we're waiting for is to actually. So the get next some step will be for you. Right. So the next step will be some uh, revised overviews and a proposed um, timeline, and then you'll be discussing that with the planning board at a joint meeting on Monday the ninth. All right. Um, 
Any other comments before we go to the harbor management plan? Betsy, did you have anything else? Um, I do not right now, but I will be getting back to you. Thank you very much. Sarah, you had your hand up. Did you want to say something before we move on? Um, only uh, in comment to Anne's the comment or somebody's comment about um, flood zones and so forth. I think one of the things that can be included in future zoning is um, some resilience requirements. So elevated first floor, for example. Um, also, we could uh, have requirements that maintain or allow or require, depending on, on what we decide, um, to have retail on a first floor mm -hmm. with housing above it. Um, if we're interested in that as a downtown um, character-ish opportunity. So my point is that these uh, this is an opportunity to include some things in addition to housing um, that might keep conversions of uh, retail to housing from happening, for example, or, um, or vice versa, whatever it would it, um, it is, uh, the zoning, zoning is more than just uh, density and it can have other requirements. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Excellent. We'll look forward to next, next week. Thank you. Okay. So, is, there, is, there a, is there a red dot near the chat? No, it's, that's oh, been sorry. there. I know. I keep looking at it, but that's an old that. red dot. And I don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm not seeing it. So, but thank you. Okay. Uh, harbor management plan. So, um, the harbor advisory committee, Greg, was the harbor advisory committee as a whole? Um, preferring not to be responsible, or did some members feel they didn't have a, a strong feeling one way or the other? Do you know? I, I don't know if it was unanimous, but I know the majority preferred not taking the lead as a as a committee of the whole. All right. So, so again, you know, you've 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 committed to moving forward with. Uh, the new harbor master plan or harbor management plan, whichever term you prefer. Um, and the question really before us tonight is, you know, how best do we structure that? Do we create a task force similar to the water task force with rep representatives from various boards and committees, and perhaps some at large? Um, or do we ask the HAC to set it up as a, as a subcommittee that they lead? Um, so one or two of them could lead a subcommittee where they would, again, uh, reach out to different representatives from various boards and committees and maybe a few uh, members at large. And um, uh, in either case, I, I see this as a project where we would um, reach out to hire a consultant mm -hmm. to help us uh, complete this. Um, UMass Boston has a, uh, has a department that has done a number of, of, of plans like this, um, and they would be a good a good potential um, resource to tap into to help us develop our, our plan. Does it make sense to have um, get a committee or subcommittee before hiring a consultant? Well, it's, it's helpful because it's helpful to have that committee be involved in the selection process and, and, and flushing out the scope of work. Okay. Um, can I ask a logistical question? So if the Harbor Advisory Committee did not want to drive this, um, let me be careful how I phrase this, um, uh, did they give you a reason why? Greg? Um, so let me, let me try to recall. Um, I don't know if they, how specific, but I would suggest that they were thinking this was um, a bigger project and they were feeling comfortable handling, um, that it does involve um, many different aspects and therefore many different players. Um, so the I reason, had the same question yeah. because yeah. they are the Harbor Advisory yeah. Committee and while they don't necessarily have to be as a whole doing it, I, I think there definitely have to be member, at least a couple members of the Harbor Advisory yes. Committee involved. Yeah. 
to that point. So um, it's an area that, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm going to say to that point, if they're reluctant to be involved, okay, then I, I think that a steering committee versus a subcommittee, a uh, steering committee with a member or two from the Harbor of uh, HAC seems to make more sense. If, yeah. they're, if they're unwilling to take this, take this as a project, then let's not mm -hmm. thrust it on them and let's find, I think there are enough people, I think, uh, you know, maybe one or two members, if, if, depending on how, how large the steering committee is going to be, I can see one or two members from the HAC. So that's my thinking as well. Mm -hmm. However, I would not leave the Harbor Advisory Committee in its current state. I don't think we should have two teams pulling on Bion's val valuable time, um, potentially with overlapping, you know, as discussions. Long as right, as long right? as they're not overlapping. But yeah, this so is where... I, personally, if we, I, I, I would totally agree with Brian that I would not impose a project on on people who didn't want to take it on, especially something this important. So I, I agree with that. However, I would advise um, we do something about the Harbor Advisory Committee, whether it be skinny it down, put it on pause, and have Bayon dictate what he needs from a, a Harbor Advisory Committee so there aren't too many people pulling at him. You know, have them be more supportive as opposed to Drive. I would like to have them here. I'd like yeah, to yeah, have yeah. Harbor Advisory Committee, Bayon, yeah. and us in a discussion about this. Yeah. And I, I think that's the only logical way to do it. Mm. Maybe if the Harbor Advisory Committee doesn't consider it important enough for them to do, we ought to think about whether, in fact, it is. We do need. We seriously need a harbor well, master that's on that. going. That's exactly right. I don't. I, I. I don't want to go putting words in their mouths. Right. I don't know that they think it's important or not. That's why I want to have yeah. them here or them represented and buy on. I think that's. I, I. I think it's a matter of confidence. And, and I, I, don't, I don't. I don't think they're against the plan. I just no, think no. they're. They're looking at their internal skill set and say. This is way above my pay grade. We're not, I don't know where this is going, but I, I don't feel confident that I can manage all of these people, some of whom know a lot more than I do, mm -hmm. perhaps, about, you know, we're putting on this on, on this committee, and I think it's going to be multidisciplinary, plus right. the consultant, and they feel unsure about being able to deal with that. Have you actually spoken with some? Is no, I, I, I just, well, I know some of the people on the committee, and I think that's where okay. things are coming from. That's why I want to have, rather than supposition, yeah. or, or let's let's table this to another meeting, perhaps February 9th. I don't want to put this <laughs> off too long, but I, I just, I would like to hear what their reasons are, and and then perhaps see where we go from there, because... They are our advisory committee, um, and and it's not that they have to be doing the he the bulk of the heavy lifting themselves. That's what we hire a consultant for. Yeah. What do we hope to get from a harbor master plan? What what is it that the board wants to see? The the use. My understanding, if I've got this correct, is that and this was not necessarily that the board wanted this, but it came about from some of the people over on Norton's Point. Norton's Point. One guy on Norton's Point. And it's the use of the different types of uses of our harbor. And it's not just boating uses um, and long-term planning. So I think... I think that it's it's not again just about boating, right? No, that's that. I wasn't. I did, what? I don't know what we're looking for. Fair enough. So I agree with you, Becky. That's what I heard based on the proposal that we heard from. You know, it's about what we envision using our harbor for, um, because right now we've been asked to make some decisions about the harbor use. Um, those expansion projects, et cetera, as an example, without having a vision about what we want the harbor to be. How much, you know, what percentage fishing, boating, harbor walk, you know, what, what, is, what is the master plan for the harbor? We don't have a North Star, so to speak. So we're making incremental decisions 
and we're going to wind up with the seaport district, which right. as the city of Boston, if they could do a redo, they'd probably have a master plan for that yes. as opposed to the little convoluted stuff they got there right now. So it, having a plan is usually helpful. Greg, did you want to offer anything else on that? <clears throat> you, you, you summed it up pretty well. I think it's a very good next step to have this discussion with the full HAC and, 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 and put together a game plan. And buy on. So if it's possible to get um, buy on Harbor Advisory Committee and probably even um, Todd involved. Yeah, that, that, absolutely. I'll be right with you, Charles. One moment, please. Um, so could we put that on the uh, February 6th, tentatively? Yep. Thank you. Um, Mr. Houghton? Hi, this is Chuck Houghton. Uh, I just had one question. Could you that... just, I'm sorry, just give your address, please, Chuck? Oh, sure. Ox, Ox Pasture Road in town. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering if one of the things that people on the committee are afraid of is, are, are, are they, do they think they're being tasked with developing a whole plan? I would think initially that they'd want to just do a survey of what other people do and just summarize and see if any of the things that other towns are doing would be advantageous. That's not getting into like developing a whole plan. Okay, thank you. Yes, that's it. That's that's a good, good, good point. So thank you. Um, okay. Um, so we've got our next steps for that. We will see them hopefully February 6th, which brings us to the first reading of select board policies, uh, first reading correspondence. Um, I did have a comment on that, and um, there's no time frame. That I saw. Did I miss that? No. No. Because I think that um, if and and is this this is just specifically for the select board. This does not apply to any other boards, committees, anything like that. The select board and our direct report. So um, I just think that it would be good to if we have a. Um, and it's not always easy, but I, I think if we're going to be doing this, then we should have a time frame. I think that's absolutely uh, a best practice. Okay. Because um, some people um, uh, expect immediate response right. to email. So if we set the expectation that that's that's not how email is used or written correspondence. You know, we get a letter. You shouldn't expect immediate um, response. So we should discuss what is a an appropriate expectation. Is it a couple days, a week, um, just to let Five them know business that days, mm -hmm. right? That kind of a thing. That's that's a best practice to include that to mm -hmm. set that expectation. And there are also people who say they want this uh, entered into public record, things like that. Um, it's automatically entered into the public record exactly. if it's addressed to any of us. Right. If it's addressed, yeah, well, yeah. If it's addressed to us at the, as a select board member and or the official email. So if someone emails you on your private email but, but addresses you as select board yes, member. Yes, so I think that's actually you did put covered that in, in here. Um, mm -hmm. Where where would you like to put um, this is primarily with I guess regard to getting back to someone who's uh, emailed us some, somebody who's emailed us in terms of what's going on with sending it around to us internally that's really all driven by that response right because it goes but. and 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 to that end, okay, you receive an email, you respond within the specified amount of time, that person replies back. 
does the clock start again on that response time? I think these yes. are things that have to be. I think a response is a new email, and and we don't need to say by the third message we're tired of hearing from you. And right. no, no, that's that's. I'm that's sorry, that was a joke. Be. No, I know. I know. <laughs> and, oh, by the way, would be the second message. Truth and jest, but hey. Um, Okay, each um, member of the select board, this is on the second page, yes. shall acknowledge every, um, specifically to that member, say within five business days? I'd say 10 yeah. business days, frankly, because some if you're away on vacation or, no? I got I, eyebrows I like five. on that one. You like five? Yeah, I like okay. five. There are too many people that would come back if they didn't hear from you in a week and say, hello. If you're on vacation and you're getting email, if you're on vacation and you're not getting, and you won't have access to email, set it up to forward. Or an away message. An away message. An away message. An away I think message. the complicating factor is that as a municipality, we don't all have, you know, Debbie looking at our email. If I was in my corporate job, I'd have an EA who's mm -hmm. monitoring my email while I'm on vacation and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And that's just not available mm -hmm. to us. So um, I do think some provision for an out of message, uh, you know, mm -hmm. response should be set on your email so that uh, that's a, a person yes. will know when to expect a response. Yeah, perhaps. So within five Continue. days. Um, five, business, five business days, yeah, I think. Five business good. days. Or if you're going to have not have access to emails, set your out of office. Yeah, I don't think it necessarily it? needs to be forwarded if it's an yeah. urgent matter. So what, what, um, what I mean by an out of office message is if you're not going to have access to your email, you go on vacation, you put in the out of office message, I am not available, please contact so-and-so like who did. is available. Your, uh -huh. your, your email said... Oh. If you need immediate assistance. Right. You can if you need me, me have yes. to see that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Our office. Okay. Yep. Um, so, okay. Shall we and I think specifically to that member, comma, within five business days. Mm hmm And then something is if out of town. Um, uh, I'm just trying to, th there should also be something in the administrator's Admin, oh, fine. Okay. Um, so yeah, this means Greg and and Greg. This is this is where five days and Greg gets and Debbie get inordinate amounts of emails every single day. Yes, but. Putting it off just means you've got two in order to mouse right, right. to face the next day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I, I think that, that we should ask them if five days is reasonable for them. Five days is Business fine. Business days. Greg, how's that work for you? More. Yeah, under normal circumstances, yes. Yeah, and, and uh, I'm just looking at perhaps clarifying uh, when we say acknowledging every email, but of course our definition of written correspondence can be other than email. Let's face it, 99% is email. Mm -hmm. But you can get other forms of correspondence. Yep. 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 So you might perhaps modify and say not just email, but or other written yes, correspondence. Has, has read the message. Yep. Perhaps so that our correspondence. Okay. Good question. Yeah. So I, I I thought the policy was really really well done. Um, this it is relevant though only for written correspondence directed to a select board member. I thought I saw that phrasing in there. Is that correct? So for example, if we're on an email distribution that is CC to, CC yes. to us or BCC to us, right? Yeah. 
we don't have to, and it's sent to our private account, we don't have to move that to our town no. account. And there is it's discussing there, town issues. There is one caveat in here, well, and I think I tried to clarify it. Um, if you get a private message, and then later in a discussion you say, well, I've heard that, mm -hmm. and nobody else has seen what, you, what you're referencing, Oh, that's you can't that's say it. You can't right. do that, right. right? Right. Either it has to be made public. So that. what about there was one other scenario I had a question on. Um, so if like a neighbor emails asking for time to discuss a particular issue, um, or asks for an opinion on a specific issue, we should forward that. If you think it's of interest, if you think you can handle it without. Um, involving the rest of the board, yeah. then go. No, I, um, I my question was, do I need to forward that to my town account so it is part of the public record, even if I can handle it myself? Like my one of my neighbors wants to talk about the beach parking or you know it, the it Pine Street good, Field. I just forward it would be that good to, to my forward town, that to your town account. It's yes. it's public record right. anyway. Right. Yeah. Your, any any of your right correspondence. <clears throat> so right. it's. Got it. It, 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 I think that's what I thought. I just wanted to double check just to have a clear yep. trail and, and mm -hmm. deliberate intent yep. of keeping it. Um, okay, so this is not just called select board, it's select board, town administrator, right. and administrative assistant, right? But the email has to be directed to us, not just us yep. copied on something right. that somebody wants exactly. to talk about. Exactly, got it. Okay, unless it's sent to Greg and Debbie. And says, please send to the board, right. and I want to hear from a board member. Yes. Okay. 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 If we put in in the middle of that paragraph before all acknowledgments shall include a disclaimer, when a member of the select board is unavailable to respond. Um, to email. Is it email? Or, yeah, okay. you're yep. not going to have yep. an automatic right. response on your letter. <laughs> on your letter. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's why I stopped. Yeah. Um, when members of the select board are unavailable, they shall mm -hmm. set an automatic response. Response stating when they should they will be available. Okay. Okay. And, and we want to make it subject to the state's public record law. Mm -hmm. Okay. No problem. Which I think it is anyway. Right. Well, and the, okay. Okay. what this is saying directly to the correspondent that yeah. this is not a private. Yes. 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 There is no expectation of privacy. Absolutely. Yeah. There is no expectation of privacy. Right. Yeah, that was a good verbiage. Yeah. Yeah. With those changes. Do we have a motion to advance it to a second reading? So moved. Second. <clears throat> moved by Kathy Bellotta, seconded John Round. Mm -hmm. Roll call vote. John Round. Yes. Brian Solacy. Yes. Kathy Bellotta. Yes. Ann Harrison. Yes. Becky Jake says yes, with immense thanks to you two on that. Okay. Oh, Debbie, I will get you updated verbiage because I can read my handwriting. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any liaison updates, John? No, I think we've touched on everything in terms of some of the other stuff up up, up on top. So I'm caught up. Brian? No, school vacation. No one was home. Kathy? Uh, not on the planning board, but I did want to mention a couple things on dispatch. So, um, so. I, I had a conversation with Greg uh, after his last meeting with the dispatch team out in Middleton. Mm -hmm. And I believe, Greg, we said that this month's meeting, um, 
we'd be ready to talk about community outreach. You know, six months is going to go fast, and yep. we want to talk about pulling that in even earlier. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not too soon to be talking about how we communicate to the, the town residents. Um, so I believe, Greg, uh, uh, we're asking um, the, the 911 team to show us a rough plan at the January 19th meeting. Correct. January okay. 17th? No, 19th, Thursdays. Their meetings are Thursdays. Okay. Um, I, I won't be able to go to that because I will be out of the country, but I'll look to get on your calendar for the following week, and then we can, um, and maybe I'll touch base with you beforehand just to kind of talk to you about what we, we want to get out of that. But I think what we're looking for is, if I recall, Allison said that she had in her head a really comprehensive approach to... Um, community outreach and and so I, I think she's probably got a really good template that you know we can work with her to adjust but I think the intent would be to bring it back to the board at the earliest possible time after that January 19th meeting which, which sounds like February 6th so I think we want to target um, a, a conversation on the dispatch um, timeline and um, communication approach for February 6th. Greg, if you're in agreement with that. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, that was it. Okay. And Harbor Advisory Committee has not met since last time, and I don't know if the Board of Health did. So, but anyway. And you did talk about the school a little bit. I talked about the school a little bit. Um, I the ConCon is meeting right now. Yep. So, um, and I, I will I will follow up um, with explanations of what they are doing um, to provide uh, services. How they have looked at providing services in alternate ways that, that could affect their, their deficit. Not an easy thing. Okay. Um, let's see. So that brings us up to date on that. Next, we have um, consent agenda. Um, the temporary vendor license. I didn't actually see those. I didn't in my see package. those or the license renewals. Yeah. The actual in my package. For the common list. victuallers. Do you have any idea how to? I do not actually. All right. Right. Usually. Yeah. But it's not. Okay, so here. Uh, we're not hearing you today. Yeah. Try another microphone. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's try. No. 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 Okay. So Make sure your camera <coughs> is. Hmm. Goes to save. Uh, you know what? Let me see if Greg needs to turn it on from there. Greg, Greg we're, we're just going to have to deal with, with the back, back for a minute. minute. Um, um, the, the computer, computer here, here, or the, or the 1623 screen, is not showing, showing that it's, it's connected, connected to the host. host. Okay. Hard to concentrate on that. Hey Siri, text Greg Fetterspiel. 
And here we go. All right. Okay. My, My apologies, apologies, everybody. everybody. You can hold, hold on, on for a few minutes. minutes. We'll try, try and get this sorted, sorted out. out. I'm, I'm happy, happy to be here. here. Turned on. Yeah. Need computer audio. No. Automatically join. Yeah, that's what we did. They said no. I'm sorry. However, if we don't have And we have the Nope. And this is just. I mean, it's picking something. And what's the other issue that you guys want to get to? Well, they can't see us. There's no video. This, this, we're supposed to have video on this. And there's no video on the room five months. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, you went to. Yeah. I wonder if we just close it out and call it then. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing, yeah. right? Hmm. Oh, we did it again. What did we do? That's just more on the computer side. On the on the Do we use everything? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I can see that. Who's on? I'm not on this one. Yeah, participants 50. Yeah. So, but. No, I'm doing some other yeah. stuff. Yeah. No, it doesn't do anything. Oh, there. there go. All right. Yay. Do you know, know what you did? Yeah. Do you remember to do this again? I don't know. No. He, it wasn't. We didn't. Just kept on tapping and figured something right. I think he did something. I think he did something right. else, too. Okay. There we go. Okay. Apologies. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. It is 638. And I would like to call to order the Manchester Select Board Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023 meeting to order. Um, we are being recorded both by 1623 Studios as well as by Zoom. Um, we will invite public comment at different <coughs> times. When we do so, please raise your hand. Um, the chair will acknowledge you and please state your name and address. Um, any and all discussion should go through the chair just to keep things from derailing. Um, first and foremost, are there any public comments on items not on tonight's agenda? I'm not public, but I guess I am. Oh. You are. We voted. State your name and address. My name is Ann Harrison, 13 Tex Point Road. Um, I am curious because I thought the board of select the select board voted to raise the um, speed limit on Pine Street, and it hasn't happened. We did, and we were going to have um, DPW coming back today with an update. They didn't have all the information ready for that update to include the status on the speed limit changes. 
So we have them coming January 17th. That, I don't think that's Ann's question. That's not my question. Why has the, the sign why has been changed? We don't know. Uh, I don't have I can follow up with I can follow up with Chuck there and make sure that happens. ASAP. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Procedural question? Do we need to open the meeting? Open the meeting. Who's present? Okay, roll call vote. John Round? Here. Brian Solisey? Here. Kathy Bellata? Here. Ann Harrison? Yes. Becky Jakes? We have a full complement of the board. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, any other items not on the agenda? Um, I'm not sure whether it's on the agenda or not, but under governance in Greg's memo, number two is revamp correspondence policy, but not communication policy. I think we begged off on communication. You did. You did. It is correspondence only. But that's what it said here, first reading correspondence. Yeah, but it says here, communication. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and communication is too big a thing right. to be handled in a single policy. We okay. can chip off pieces sometime, but... Yep. All right. Well, we that's Correct, so we'll come back to that. Is there, an, yeah. is there an action we need to record as a result of what you're bringing up in? So. We discussed that at the last meeting, so it should have, it should be noted that it's correspondence yeah. and not communication, because that was so. clarified. Mm -hmm. Greg, did you have that? That's correspondence, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, Chairman's report um, on the action items. Uh, we do have that the traffic calming uh, DPW will be on the 17th. Um, and along those lines on the action items with... So just a question procedurally, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yep, no, just, no, no. Um, so the I think Ann had requested that the action item spreadsheet be included in our package. That wasn't done. It wasn't here. So. Right. So yeah. I just think that we yep. want to do that. And just a question, as a result of this discussion, who is going to be updating the actions as we talk through them? Debbie, is that something you're going to do? I can do that. OK. Yeah. Just want to clarify. Yeah. OK, so excuse me. So if I wanted to update something on the action plan, because I, I was going to destroy everything that was sent to me. <laughs> I saw that. I, I saw tried. that you went in. I was tried. trying to change it. I'm just going to send it to you. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. But I did try. I did notice that. But you did give it a go. I was exhausted, so I had it. All right. So regarding that, you uh, that's what, and we'll get back to her. So, so, so Ryan had the first action around the governance where you did get back to Hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we want to set a new date by when we just... I we don't want to forget about yeah. her, and we don't want this right. to drop. So I think should we send about three yeah. months or something? I told her uh, we'd get together, you know, let's, I'll update her once we have this discussion, but we're still messing around with governance, so. We're going to have a discussion on right. that on this, the next meeting. Okay, so. so would you I, like to push out the date to. Yeah, I'll, I'll touch base with her and just tell her that uh, uh, we'll get back to her sometime mid-February. Uh, at, at this point, because of, of, um, how governance and boards and committees, I think that before we can actually take any action on that, right. it, it'll be it'll probably be longer than that, but it's it's I nice just to let her know where we're going. Yeah, it's, it's more just to update the date as a tickler to remind us so, to you know, keep her um, in the loop. I will send her an email tomorrow just stating that we've discussed this and we will, it's still, and that we will, uh, I'll get back to her. Mid to late February with any updates. Well, and the way when we, it, the way that email might go out um, may fall under well, not correspondence, yes, because it's just no. first reading, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it has to do with the governance work, yeah. making sure we can right. you know, get that far enough along. But I mean, even if you set the date out three months, just as a keep it on the action item yeah. list so we don't forget about her. Mm -hmm. um, Debbie, maybe just something. A, a further update so we yeah. don't forget. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, in this case, as in most cases, 
over communication wouldn't be yeah, a problem. Absolutely. Just yeah. touching base and saying, hey, we haven't, you know, we're just, I told you I get back to the first of the year. This is what, uh, yeah. ex you know, we have an expectation that we'll have more formalized uh, yep, discussions doesn't hurt. going Absolutely. On. And along those lines, um, you were going to be doing um, community outreach. Yeah, that's what's going on. That was <laughs> nothing at all. No, I, I wanted to bring back um, the conversation corner, select board comp, because that kind of, with the holidays, um, got dropped by the wayside. Did you have a comment on that? It's kind of a long evening sitting there alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. You were alone? No, you had we, we had a very nice chat, and that was not a problem, but it was not necessarily an outreach to the public. And, and, and maybe we ought to think about how we're publicizing that. Well, it was also the first time. I, I think that that's, it, it, it needs to be publicized, yes, better. Um, and perhaps, as John and Brian have suggested, maybe we go to somewhere a little more public rather than, and, mm -hmm. rather than, and, and my <clears throat> thought was to perhaps allow people, if they wanted to have more private chats over at Seaside One, However, they can always talk to us and make an appointment if that's the case. But I think maybe going out in a more public. Yeah, <clears throat> well, I mean, I had suggested being outside. That wasn't a big, uh, that wasn't popular with Brian for the winter time, as I recall. Time, yeah. <laughs> but uh, my, my, other, my other suggestion was, even though it's not so private, at least you start it in the town hall on Thursdays and see what happens. Yep. I don't know how many of these discussions are so private that people say, I'm not talking to you because yeah. what I want to talk yeah. about. I mean, you might as well give it a shot Absolutely. when you're in traffic. Yeah. And I think we ought to probably move it there and see what happens because people do walk in. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, any other thoughts from the board on A, do we do it? B, where do we do it? The conversation corner. Yeah, I, I I would do it on the Thursday nights and pick out sounds fun to me. Pick out uh, what is it once once a month? Yeah, I, yeah. I think uh, if I recall, there's a lot of finance committee meetings on Thursday nights over the next few yeah, months. Every right? Thursday, right? Every, every, so yeah. that might be a natural time to catch a few extra people. Who knows? Mm -hmm. it doesn't hurt. Yeah. So I do it Thursday. We have that. We have the easel right with the mm -hmm. the sign. Yeah. Just yeah. Put it out there on the front floor and pull out a couple of chairs and a small table. Yeah. And a cup of coffee. Card table. Right. Have a okay. Card table. I'll have to see if we do. I, I have sure one. I can if bring not, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Just let me know. Okay. So, so the what's next, the action? The you would action like? is um, do we have a Thursday? Yeah, let's pick a date here. This month. And who would like to go sit? Thing at town hall. So this Thursday we have our joint FinCom, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no, mm -hmm. that's just FinCom. Uh, our joint FinCom is next Thursday. And also, if anybody's doing that zoning overlay districts, that's the twelfth. Zoom, that's the twelfth. Correct. And then FinCom is at seven o'clock the same day. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the zoning overlay six to seven FinCom. Joint FinCom is seven. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, we have the 19th. Uh, and then the 26th is FinCom meeting regarding the school district. So I think that would not be. <laughs> I'm confused. I thought the school committee discussion with FinCom was the 19th. That was in Greg's memo, unless I misread that. Um, we can check that. I thought I read it. Greg, do you know when that is? So it's, you're, you're meeting with the, the FinCom on the 12th to go over public safety and yep. ambulance. Yeah. And then on the 26th is when the school budget right. is going to be on the, on the agenda. Okay, sorry, 26th. Thank, thank you. So we have available um, the 19th or I don't think we want to do this Thursday. Yeah, I will not be. I'll be out of the country on the 19th, so I can't do that. I could 
do one in February. Uh, but, but what's the time frame here? Is this like, uh, say, 5 to 6.30, something like that? What do you think? 5 to 6.30? Hour and a half? You and I were there two hours, but I think 5 to 6.30? I can do that. Or do you want to do 6 to 7? I just... I have a commitment at 6.30 or so. It's kind of loose, but... Good. I'll, and and five, um, to 5 to 6.30. And um, I'm happy to do that, Brian, unless you... On the listen. 19th, I've got a constituent at uh, 5.30. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I'm meeting with a constituent at 5.30. Lindsay Banks. I'm not. Yeah. No, okay. No, I'm just. Yeah. <laughs> no, we've been trying. We've been trying to collect, connect each other uh, for a while. Okay. So select board conversation corner will be. Oh, there we go. Get rid of that. Five o'clock on the nineteenth. <clears throat> Five. Yep. Five o'clock to six thirty. In town hall. I can be there for the first half hour. Under the cone of silence. I'll be there for the first half hour. Good. Mm -hmm. Just no discussions of you know, right. the anyway. Okay, good. That's wonderful. So we can ask Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. I see you're there. Um, maybe we can get Tiffany to. Hello, everybody. Happy New Happy Year. Year. Happy maybe we can. Happy get New Year, Year to you, too. Thank you. Um, could we get something posted um, either in the Tide, Weekly Tide, or maybe several areas that, that the um, select board will be having a conversation corner, town hall lobby? Absolutely. Excellent. I'll, I'll put it in the Tide and on social media this week. We'll, yes. and for the next few weeks, we'll promote it. Wonderful. So that'll be on the, the um, 19th from 5 to 6.30. Great. Wonderful. Noted. Thing. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Tiffany. You're welcome. Okay. Now that we've got that, uh, select board goals. I'm sorry. Um, we had some other actions that are coming up for the next that we had originally, it says on the spreadsheet, we're supposed to be discussed at the next select board meeting. The 17th. Yeah, so do yep. we want to confirm, just run through those quickly just to make sure they're... Good point. Um, okay. So you said DPW was going to present on the 17th, so that's a date change? That's a date change. Okay. So 117. We then have um, quarterly reviews, which um, I have that right here. So that's on the 17th. Um, we no. will be getting the liaison update report on the Water Resource Protection Task Force on the 17th. Mm -hmm. We're still on track, great. Right? That's on track. And then uh, we have the joint meeting on the 12th with uh, FinCom. So on the 17th. So it's the ambulance. Yep. Decision will make that on the 17th after meeting with FinCom on the 12th, or we're going to make the decision on the 12th? Probably make, make it on the 12th, on the 12th but okay. the 17th is when we okay. would finalize okay. Awesome. that. And that is all that I had coming up right away. Then I yep. had goals for climate resiliency coming up on the 31st. Yep. And then everything else is farther off. I have a question on the... Um Manchester uh, Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. Is there a presentation coming up with them? I thought that was. Yeah, Greg, isn't there something coming up? Yeah, we need to confirm that, but I believe we're in for the 17th for that. That's correct. Well. It, it, it may be the first meeting of February, depending on people's schedules. It's getting pretty busy on the 17th, well, I will say. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> But that's not on our action items. Right, but they were expecting the 17th yeah. when I spoke with them yesterday. So maybe it should be an action. That's not our action, though. So it, it, the, again, the, the question is, is there some deadline that they are trying to meet which requires us to discuss you know, have a discussion with them on the 17th, or if we delayed it till the first week of February, would that I think cause we could probably, 
that, that there is an action that they need to do, but it's not a time sensitive thing so much. I don't think uh, to me. I can confirm that, but okay. in my discussions, they weren't. Um, if, if that's the case, why don't we um, put that to early February? But John, if you could confirm that that would not yeah. be a problem, that would be wonderful. Okay. And then just, again, just to remind everyone, on the 9th, next, next month, there will be the joint meeting with the planning board. Yeah. Where you'll, you'll conduct the interview for a uh, replacement on the vacancy. And that's at 6.30? 6.30 start, yes. Right. All right. So the first meeting in Monday, on, in February is the 6th, correct? That's what I yes. have. January is one of those months where we've got two weeks. Yeah, after, after Next Monday. Extra Monday. Yep. Okay, so February 6th. So I will put that as 2-6. Right, and then Greg... You said the 9th at 6.30. That's when they start. I have that our joint meeting with them starts at 7. I thought they were doing the public hearing at 7. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. I'll just put us down at... Um, Ron, um, Ron raised his hand here. Maybe he can... Yes. Ron? Oh. He's unmuted. I can see he unmuted. Uh, Ron, we can't hear you, I'm sorry to say. I see your hand. Not your real hand. I figured it oh, this isn't down. I can affect the agenda, which he might be doing right now. Um, okay. and I think you're I think we have a joint meeting at six thirty, but I'll okay. double check the agenda and get back to you in a minute. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Moving right along, we have select board goals. Greg, do you want to start this off? Sure, thank you. Uh, so you have the broad areas, the five broad areas of, of governance, land management, climate resiliency, um, fiscal uh, discipline, fiscal um, uh, matters, and then infrastructure as your five basic um, goals that you've identified. Mm -hmm. We've highlighted specific topics under each of those, three or four um, items that go along with each of those topics. And um, many of them do not yet have specific action steps. And um, I'm not suggesting that we try to do that for all of these, all 15 items tonight, but I do think it's important um, that we have some general discussion about um, the need for action steps and, and timeline, and the deadlines for those. And as as uh, Kathy appropriately reminds us, uh, it's good to have those um, <laughs> those as targets so that we don't lose track and that we have some accountability. Um, so I do think it's, it's helpful to have some conversations in general right now, but I think to hone them down, it may make sense to have um, um, those who are assigned to sort of champion a particular area, a particular topic, that meeting with me and perhaps uh, one or two others, uh, that we um, flush out in more detail the actual action steps, timeline, et cetera, um, so that we can uh, better shape the, um, the goals and making sure we have, again, those specific action items with some target dates. So, Greg, process check. Um, so, uh, Debbie has created a folder for us on SharePoint where we can update our action items, et cetera. Um, is this, I didn't see this information in that same place, but if we put it there, then we could update it in advance of the meetings. Um, that, that might be helpful in addition to what you're suggesting. So I, I think what you're suggesting is right. Yes, on. no, I think that's that's a good suggestion. I agree. Um, on the governance piece, I can speak to that. Um, Susan and I are meeting. Uh, Susan Beckman and I are meeting on Friday. She has um, conducted uh, a lot of information gathering around the committees and, and interviewed the town staff, et cetera. And she's compiling 
that information and um, structuring some recommendations. And I'm going to review the first pass of that on Friday with her. I hate to bring up January 17th, but we were targeting to come back to the full board with the information and the recommendations for January 17th if there's room on the agenda. Well, I think we'll just have to take a look at that. You know, just aim for that. Yeah, so that's what we're targeting for that. But um, okay. okay. I don't know. We got a piece called the MBTS planning process or something mm -hmm. in PowerPoint. Yep. So those PowerPoints um, were um, a first draft attempt. Uh, Tiffany, I believe, has been gathering feedback from people on them. I know I've sent her some feedback. I had so no idea who to give feedback to. Tiffany. I yeah. happen not to own a 32-inch mm -hmm. monitor. Okay. And without a 32-inch monitor, it's unreadable. And oh. even <laughs> oh, the plan. Okay, I'm sorry. I was I, I was referring to the graphic. Um, you're talking about the um, the individual plan. Yeah. Did and, Susan and put that together, or the town plan? I, I don't know who put it together. Yeah. But that's a good question. So um, Susan, Susan did. Yeah, Susan, Susan did. Yeah. Put it I I can I can print it after I've edited it and made it as narrow as possible in right. agate point, but. When I'm looking at a document, I want to be able to, mm -hmm. I don't want to have to be sitting at my desk. It doesn't matter if I'm sitting at my desk because I don't have a monitor that prints it. So this, as a means of communication, is, at least for me, completely useless. So, um, I don't we know. Can in, we can work on formatting that so that yeah. there's you. good pitch breaks on it. Yeah. <laughs> It might be helpful, um, Greg, when the collateral is sent out, if it's you know put in PDF format and a, at a legible right. font, that way people aren't messing around with actual spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. The spreadsheets are good if, the problem, if we want to update is them. Wait a minute. One at a time, please. Sorry. Go ahead. Is that it? You've got to go. Yeah. Mm. Go ahead, Ann. Here, read it. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you on small fonts. So I think that's the, it has to be legible if it's sent out to the select board in a, in a meaningful way. Yeah. It, it needs to be legible on a laptop screen so that I'm not sliding across and forgetting what topic I'm starting with when I get to the notes. That's, Susan has a comment to yeah. make and why don't we let Susan... Mm -hmm. Speak to this. Hello, Susan. Unmute yourself and. I think I'm, I'm unmuted. Am I unmuted now? You are unmuted. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm, I'm wondering what document are we talking about? <laughs> I don't know. This is a self spreadsheet, right? 12, 28, this is, this 22 is the, the, master, the master spreadsheet with the. Various tabs in it that have. Oh, okay, okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, that was. Tabs and goals and this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah, that wasn't, well, whatever. We can deal with that. Thank you. I didn't understand what you were looking at. Okay, so we will hopefully work on font yeah. size. It's, it's not a problem with font size. Document is too wide mm -hmm. to be read. Too many columns. Too many. Well, it's not that there are too many columns. The columns are all useful, but the form. This should not be a PowerPoint. This should be something formatted as a document. Okay. In my opinion. Well, I, I, I would agree. It was it was challenging for me to read that. So I used it and printed something else over it. There we go. <laughs> Okay. It, it would be nice if, if what we're given to community could be printed so that I can lie on the sofa and think about it rather than... Well, and, and to that end, I would just say also, if, if I don't have to turn my head to look at documents that are not straight, 
It's on the road. Some pages la the ones that you sent today were great. I got those. Those are all able to be read without. I think we had some holiday staff um, vacations that perhaps impacted Absolutely. our normally very legible packet. How's that? That's <laughs> perfect because that's exact and and grateful thanks to all yeah. who chipped in. Chipped in. in. in yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So back to select Gord, Gord Gold. Um, Greg, did you did you feel there were some that we should try to? We we just went down the governance, align master plan with department boards, committee work plans, and we'll be potentially seeing that with Kathy and Susan on the seventeenth. Uh, the revamp correspondence. Crossing out communication policy. We're doing first read tonight, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then foster cohesion and cooperation on boards and committees. Should 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 does it make sense to go down these line by line right now, Greg? Or in, in quick order? Okay. Yes. That's um, fine. I'm going to come in. I'm going to set a time as you had suggested to come in and and chat with you. Um, how best to go about that because I think there's nothing that can be done until we actually have all the the boards and committees sorted yeah I think it might be beneficial to wait and see what Susan has collected mm -hmm. etc and then yep. we'll yes. pass the baton on to Becky to drive the rest of that or, or that that piece of it right so that makes sense I think Okay. Next, we have. Um, so I'll 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 make an appointment with you both before and after the seventeenth. Does that make sense, Greg? Yes, it does. Okay. So before and after one seventeen. Um, next, we have Brian improve and increase engagement with the community, and that's ongoing. Um, no, <clears throat> excuse me. I think it's, uh, as I become aware of things, or anyone becomes aware of things uh, that are community type events, or even if it's a uh, a large gathering, uh, you know, something going on at the Legion might be uh, like there was a uh, over the summer. Mm -hmm. There was the uh, <clears throat> it was a bike ride mm -hmm. from Haverhill to uh, the uh, the Legion riders. Well, yeah. maybe if you. I, I, I stumbled calendar? on that. Okay, yeah, I stumbled on that myself. My daughter called me over to come over to that one, okay. but uh, just, just be, uh, I'll just as as I become aware, uh, we'll send something out. I don't know if it's, at this point is even at well, this particular time. Even if we could add them, I don't know if it's appropriate to have those on the town calendar. But if the so. select board, be, I'm saying there, there might be some private, open private parties that not necessarily belong on the on the town website, but. Where uh, you know a member of the uh, town uh, government would be welcome as mm -hmm. far as floating through there. You know, there's a rotary meetings every uh, Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. Well, three ones, three Wednesdays mornings, and then one evening uh, meeting. Kathy. So what? So what would be the purpose? Um, so I think in order to there's different types of engagements. There's engagement with the intent of just listening to hear what's on people's minds, mm -hmm. which I think the conversation corners. Are meeting mm -hmm. that need, then the an, another reason for engaging is to actively communicate about a particular project or mm -hmm. effort. Right. Is there a third reason that we're specifically targeting? You know, trying to cover with engagement is there a third reason why we're doing it. Because I think the first reason we can cover yeah. with the conversation corners and maybe, like you said, a calendar or something would be helpful. But the listening piece. Um, That's just, I mean. Listening just, is huge. Yeah. Accessibility. Yeah. Like so every, I, every that, uh, I don't know, during the summer, you, uh, contest in the park. Mm -hmm. So I think what Becky okay. is suggesting is could you take the action to develop, a draft a calendar, up here, list out the things, you know, just put it on paper or. Oh, okay, okay. Just and not necessarily for public. But but for the for select us. board to be no, aware, no, the internal memo, an yeah. internal memo, yeah. sure, yeah, in advance, in advance, 
sometimes I find out the day off. Yeah, well, we understand. That. But I, but I think it's it's valuable to even have a calendar of known events. Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. known events every single year. Right. And if we could just even put those on a list, then we could see where where there's a big gap in listening, and we could specifically target a date to fill right. the gap, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so Brian, um, it it also I would I think that it would Greg would have some good insight into that as well. All right, um, Greg. Before we go into land management, did you want to add anything? You're muted. All right, um, some of the. Some of our, our projects will, will certainly warrant specific outreach efforts. Mm -hmm. So we will we will get to those as we talk about the different projects themselves. Um, so I don't think what, what, what you've covered so far is fine for now. All right, wonderful. Um, Tiffany noted that the COA events would also be good opportunity, and that's yes, very much so. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, all right, so moving on to land management, um, developing a response for the MBTA zoning. Um, and so that is under A and C. Um, that was Ann and Kathy. We have Betsy Ware here. We can talk about that. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think Becky, um, excuse me, um, Betsy is you know, got full grasp of that yeah, now. Absolutely. Um, and I think you have a, a subcommittee of the planning board and the select board to kind of shepherd that yeah, forward. I, so I, I think this was just to get get, get it going. launched. Yeah. All right. Um, so I, I'm prepared to say that we have done that. Yeah, I think we have done that. I, I guess the question would be, would we be the first points of contact as, uh, for the board as Betsy is looking for feedback? Or do, do we want Betsy to bring everything back to the whole board? Um, if we want Betsy to bring everything back to the whole board, then I agree with Ann. This action, you know, this piece is everybody's responsibility. But if there's, you know, some nurturing in between that you want Ann and I to do, then... I kind of feel, and and I want the, the rest of the board to weigh in on this, but I, I feel for um, uh, clarity, if it's brought to the entire board, that that would be better than, right. than just me right. too. Yeah, right. Is that, yeah. yes, yes. yes. You know, Getting back to, uh, as we get deeper into this, any one of us can be walking the streets, someone's going to ask us a question about it. Right. So as right. long as we're all... Uh, on the same page. On yes, same page. It, that's exactly. exactly. I, I agree. That's exactly. So I think yeah. I agree with Ann. This has been launched, and okay. now it's just a regular board action to. All right, Betsy. That. We will come back to you when we get to one discussion items, item C. Um, now the harbor master plan that is mine, and um, that <clears throat> action date is. Uh, has not yet been set. So I'm going to talk with Greg about that as well in Bion, although we do want to talk about that after MBTA zoning mm -hmm. um, in terms of, of coming up with mm -hmm. potentially a, a sub next steps. Um, support efforts to diversify housing. John? That was uh, the discussion we had 20 minutes ago with regard to the meeting that we'll have with them on the sixth, where they're reformulating their RFP approach to be more of an RFQ approach. Yeah, okay, interesting. So I was wondering how that might shake out. Okay, so you, they're meeting on the sixth, and, um, and we will hope to hear from them on the 17th. Is that correct? Um, no, 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 six, we said six. the sixth. Too much Thank going you. on. Thank you. Right. Um, Greg, did you want to say something about that? No, no you covered it. Okay. Um, eight, cell signaling uh, to ensure town benefits. Brian, and I understand you've been in contact. Yeah, I've had uh, a couple of meetings with them. Yeah. 
Okay. And and Matt, with whom? Uh, with uh, Mark Lubsky, their yep. attorney, and Peter Godeau, who is the uh, product manager. Uh, it's nice that you say his name properly. He well, appreciates that. <laughs> I've known the Godeau Construction Company for a long time. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, I think we've had, uh, and they're informal, but I get a sense of what they're looking for. A lot of it will, uh, I think, uh, Betsy will t touch base with some of the, uh, uh, like the mass works. They'll be look. Uh, they'll be looking. Right. They're working with Chuck, uh, as far as the extension of uh, the town sewer line out mm -hmm. to the LCD and reading with uh, reading Betsy's uh, memo. Uh, whatever we do with the LCD, if we do something with the LCD, that's that's a step that's going to be have to be taken. So they're going to be looking for that. Uh, they've made some inquiries uh, about potential tips. It's a it's a process that mm -hmm. they're they're just in, they're they're just trying to turn over right. kick over every rock. Uh, it's going to be a phase development over twenty years. <laughs> All right, and the first phase uh, is what they're looking at, and then uh, there there's, has been some discussion about having uh, an outreach a community outreach, uh, probably in the first quarter. So uh, what are the town what type of um, I'm just curious, have, have there been any specific town benefits discussed? Well, uh, well, yeah, they, they feel that uh, there, will, there will be some ancillary uh, benefits as far as downtown, as far as, you know, uh, the retail shopping goes, as they bring people in. And obviously, a tax base, commercial tax base is, is probably... Uh, that's undoubtedly a benefit. Okay, I did tell them that we would, uh, as we go forward, we would be looking for a lot of things from them. And they're, they're, uh, they have, they were no shocked, and they, there was an expectation that we will be having our hand out. Uh, so how did you guys leave the conversation? Like, what's the next step? I sit with them probably once a month. Okay. okay. Uh, again, it's informal. Uh, the, the, the next big step for them would be, uh, and this is, I think, with them working with Chuck, is the Mass Works uh, grant mm -hmm. and the okay. application, which has to be uh, approved by this this board, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and then potentially an outreach uh, pro, uh, program. They are thinking about maybe doing a grassroots uh, meeting with community or civic uh, leaders mm -hmm. or civic. Uh, you know, I'm gonna call them. <laughs> so we, do we know the timing around their request to come before this board? No, just, right now they're just they're just formulating mm -hmm. and trying to get a, a sense of what needs to be done. Uh, I would say that they were talking about before coming to the board about just having a community outreach, mm -hmm. uh, probably the first quarter. Mm -hmm. That's and a then, good idea, and I wonder if um, after your meetings, mm -hmm. if you might um, just send a synopsis. Okay, I've been talking with Greg to, on this. Sure. Which okay. is great, yeah. and that's, um, I think, though, to, to, if the whole board has a sense of what's going on, and just bullet points, sure. um, including Greg and Betsy and, and Debbie, okay. and yeah. I don't yeah. know if um, planning Usually just what I do is I usually stop and, and just uh, touch base with, uh, as opposed to putting in running, but I will do that in the future. Excellent. And I'll Thank probably you. set up something with them probably in the next two weeks. I'll try to once a month to sit down with them. Good. Can, can you or Greg explain... I've been asked how it happens that a private company is looking for a state grant for um, infrastructure. Uh, We're the ones looking for the state grant to 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 put infrastructure up there. I think it's it's a common uh, practice in real estate development. If the uh, if we look at uh, the benefits. Sorry, it's very loud water pouring. You know the uh, the overall benefits of. Basically, that state grant to help uh, pay for the extension of the uh, sewer line uh, that brings in a major corporate tax base. Betsy has her hand up. And yes, so please I'm speak to that. Betsy Ware has. Can you speak to that, please? <laughs> Brian. Good evening. Um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you, Betsy. Okay. Um, it's very common for a community to pursue grants for not only an individual project, but that whole area will benefit greatly from having infrastructure. You've got um, a commercial district with um, little to no infrastructure or not sufficient infrastructure. 
Um, and it's very common for increasing the tax base to pursue that type of grant by the town for the benefit of the community, as well as for specific property owners. So, so said a little differently, um, it's the LCD, the LCD district, you know, that's the reason we would want this grant and this particular company would be the first beneficiary. And I think it's helpful to have a real beneficiary right away in order to increase the probability of getting the money. Because if you, if you, you know, just, yeah, if it's just speculative, hey, we have this LCD and we have no idea who's going to come in, but we need a whole bunch of money to improve the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I think it helps the case to have a real customer, if you will, or and a real benefit. to that point, when you do have an end user already lined up, right. we have a better idea what the actual cost of it. Because and the requirements, real Those requirements. requirements. It's just that this question of tying into the sewer from the LCD has come up before and was there was a very negative reaction to it. Um, Betsy, is it, my understanding is that the organization would help to craft the request from MassWorks. Is that typically how that goes? Um, I had discussions with um, um, the DPW director, the town engineer. I have not talked with any individual property owner um, in the LCD district, but um, in order to have that area come to fruition um, in terms of a grant, we would need um, one, two, three, four um, people signing up saying they would benefit from this, um, be this improvement. Right. And part, of, part of what you need to show in MassWorks grants typically is, is job growth. So you need to document the number of jobs that could be created that, that would temporary as well as permanent. Yes, both yeah. both construction jobs and permanent jobs. And certainly um, the new CTS research lab is, is slated to generate quite a few quite a few number of new jobs. So um, it, it could be a worthwhile project. We we'll need to have them come in and give a presentation before you. Uh, when they're ready to do that, I would anticipate that in the next you know, month or two, um, then, then we can have a more in-depth conversation uh, about the project and about the application and, and the various uh, benefits both uh, to a, a property owner but as well as benefits to the town. Thank you. Um, Betsy, did you have another comment? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I ended up, um, when I was in Dracut, um, I was working with a developer who was um, working to develop a town property that was um, acquired with CPA funds for affordable housing. And this particular designated developer um, didn't think he was eligible for MassWorks infrastructure money. and. I basically did the research, wrote the grant, and we ended up getting close to 800000 in infrastructure money for this project. Wow. So it's very common to do that type of thing. Good. Let's get busy. Thank you, Betsy. Have we contacted the doctor's office that's there? Are they interested in looking in? Hooking in? I don't. It would make sense. As well as the MAC. Well, the MAC is owned by self yeah, so yeah. now. Yeah. So, but, but it is a. No, yeah, I think we think. should get in touch with SLV. See if they'd like it. Go up there. Yeah, you also, so all the properties, you know, the, the town land up there where the old compost facility will be moving from, that, that becomes a a space that would benefit from utilities as well. Yeah, I would imagine, and speaking, excuse me, is that the doctor's office, once they have access to uh, this town sewer, they can actually grow their site as well. Because mm -hmm. that, I think that's what stopped them from being any bigger than they are, mm -hmm. is the size of the septic or size of the sewer. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is 
basic yeah. value mm -hmm. all along. And it's a, obviously it's got, if we end up moving the DPW to the compost site, mm -hmm. that will be good for the town too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, we can we can explain that this is a broader good. Yes. Yes, it's not just for one variety. Right. Was, was there any discussion of water? Uh, it would be both water and sewer. That's okay. All right. It seems to me it would. All right, I'm going to move us along. Um, thank you. I think next up we have the climate resiliency. Greg, that is you. And um, that will be done by the end of the month. Well, in terms of a synopsis of past right. studies, we'll have that for you. Um, you. You had the introduction to the uh, village flooding study. Uh, we'll, we'll continue, um, and there'll be an, an update and more detailed presentation on some of their initial um, data findings um, sometime in February. Okay. So we'll move so, that to February? Yep. Uh, we'll just put February 23 because we don't know which date yet. Okay, not February 23. Real time modifications? No, I'm just telling oh, you. All right. I, I see Debbie writing over there, but it's not turning out. Okay. Two eyes on <laughs> Okay. I'm making notes as well. All right, there's that. Okay, and engage in. Um, the coastal zone management, flooding, all that site, that's one and the same, isn't it? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yep. Fiscal discipline, um, identify opportunities to right size service levels. Greg, I will come in and talk to you about that as well. Um, I have. Right. That's, for the next two months, that's what we'll be focused on with the Finance Committee for sure. Right. And, and you know, plowing through this, uh, the, the, Proposed budget. So yeah. um, I'll make an appointment with you <laughs> this month. Um, and then identify options to impact MERS opt operational deficit. And I guess we'll discuss that after the FinCom school committee meeting at the end of the month. Oh. I mean, it's been discussed in the collaboration meeting. Um, and and the school is convinced that they need a 4.2% increase. Um, and that either comes out of everybody else or we find another source of money. Or and and we have there are alternatives for both towns. Um, or we figure out ways to reinvent the wheel. Right. Have they discussed any structural changes? Because it's this has been talked about as a, as some of the collateral I've seen as a structural issue because they're, they have been his overspending right and tapping into their reserves. So that's that means there's something structurally. I yeah. Just in, 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 in order. order in their opinion, in order to maintain the quality mm -hmm. of the school programs, they need larger increases than are available under 2.5, mm -hmm. under Proposition 2.5. So we could decide that they should be have larger class sizes mm -hmm. and that they should have fewer sports and that they should cut electives. Um, I think that would not be in the interest of the town, and right. of course, neither does the school department. Right. I think that what was being discussed at one of the meetings was um, data. I, I think some of the data that was asked for was around, and this kind of gets to right sizing the service levels. There are some um, classes which have low enrollment, but they're very important mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. curriculum. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe it was a select board member from Essex who was poking at, is there a, another way to deliver that service? Mm -hmm. And yes, and, and send, we could send kids out to the community colleges. You can do some things online. Um, so I, I think that's the information personally that I'm looking for because 
I have some familiarity with with education from um, some lecturing I did in, in the university systems and and teachers, lots of teachers in my family. So I'm just, I, I think we owe it to the townspeople to understand, uh, understand that they, what options they have looked at mm -hmm. for delivering those very important mm -hmm. programs with small enrollment. And that it's very connected to what you're talking about, Becky, with right sizing. Services. Right, and I think though the point that you're making, Kathy, about um, making sure the townspeople understand right. or, or not, an, but, but are given the information right. of the options that have been looked at. Yes. I think that's critical. Um, right. Because it's ultimately about, their decision as to whether or not right. the budget so. gets passed and making sure, I think our role is to make sure the townspeople have the mm -hmm. right information and I feel that information has been requested and not yet provided. So the question here without going in too much right now is, um, and have you had an opportunity to chat with um, somebody at the school in terms of what different options have been looked at just we could get a, a synopsis you know much like we've asked Brian but but okay what if what's been looked at um, and I'm not asking I'm, you to tell me now I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm at all the school committee meetings right. um, and I hear what they're saying and we, we have the collaboration meetings where um, alternatives um, are being discussed. Um, I will, before our next meeting, I will get together with Pam and Avi and ask them for a specific list of alternatives for providing services. Is that, does mm -hmm. that fit? Yeah. I think that's fair. I think that's, that's really good. I yeah. mean, what, you know, that, that, that they have discussed and, and what just options they've looked right, at. Just about transparency, just yeah. helping the townspeople right. understand. One thing I can say without going back is that the requirements from the state mm -hmm. um, for uh, aid to, to students who are not progressing, right. um, that requirement goes up almost annually. Yeah. And as a result, a great deal more attention has to be, adults have to be available right. To, right. to help. Um, and these things need to be yeah. clarified and so that right. people understand that. I mean, I, I think that there's a lot that is not clearly defined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe, maybe you can get that information as well. And if it could be done up mm -hmm. in a one one other thing that um, is a little hard to make clear to people when they're just looking at the operational budget is that they've made significant investments in um, special education mm -hmm. to, yes. to reduce the number of students who have to go out of district. Mm -hmm. yes. And that reduces a, a cost, but it's hard. Yeah, this I all Sent you an updated packet with the list. Five o'clock. Oh, the list. Yes. Right. It's not yeah. a list, but it's not the actual. Okay. Those we, are just those are just the renewals. Then there are no, so nothing's renewals. changed. Nothing's okay. changed. Okay. All right. Any questions on the consent agenda? Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Moved by Ann Harrison, seconded by John Round. Roll call vote. Ann Harrison? Yes. Kathy Bellotta? Yes. Brian Solisey? Yes. John Round? Yes. Becky Gibbs says yes. Okay, town administrator's report. Okay, uh, briefly, uh, the compost project uh, is underway, construction is underway at the um, current transfer station area. Uh, with that construction, the transfer station is closed Wednesdays, but it is open on Saturdays. Uh, so a little bit of inconvenience for folks, um, but it is open on Saturdays to uh, to take people's uh, trash and recyclables. Um, so that construction will uh, definitely see an uptick in the next few weeks uh, with the uh, cutting down of the, of 
of the trees that are in the way of the construction of the new facility. Um, and there'll also be some blasting of rock in the area. Um, so there'll definitely be an uptick of activity that people will notice, uh, but they are, are uh, making good progress and, um, and we are pleased with, uh, with the work that they've done to date. Uh, they've been working uh, primarily on the, um, on the landfill itself, uh, adding gut to the cap so that they can um, safely uh, drive the trucks up to the top where they will have their finished product stored and, and, and trans transferred into trucks to take away. Um, so uh, good, good news there, making good progress. Um, we already talked about budget meetings. Um, just a reminder that the uh, Finance Committee will be meeting with them on the 12th to talk about public safety and the ambulance. And then um, on the 26th is when the school district budget will be the focus. <laughs> excuse me, of the finance committee meeting. Um, I'll, I'll have some more news on this, but uh, some good news on, on, on funding for some climate resiliency work. Um, year two funding is underway, thanks to Senator Tarr and, and, and Margaret Ferrante for securing some state funding for phase, phase two. Um, that's underway now, looking at um, our various uh, ecosystems and how those ecosystems can be um, enhanced in terms of their health and thus their ability to um, be a, a protector or a, an absorber, if you will, of some of the impacts that we can expect um, as, as the climate continues to change. Um, we also were fortunate to receive a, a, a nice award through the federal um, budget process uh, through um, NOAA research grant. Um, which will allow us to do a year three for the regional efforts. And again, that focus um, will be on building capacity at the local level, both from the emergency preparedness perspective, um, you know, when those large storms hit, making sure that we have uh, plans in place to um, best manage those impacts in terms of uh, getting people this the, uh, the basics that they need, keeping people warm if it's winter or keeping them dry, keeping them fed, et cetera, um, if, um, if major impacts are, are happening around us. Um, but also building our own capacity at the, at the town and city level uh, for Gloucester and for the other three towns on Cape Ann, um, building our local capacity as we look towards um, the changes that we're gonna be needing to make. Um, so good news on that, and as I say, more more news to come um, as we flush out some of the details, particularly in, in year three. Um, we'll be dovetailing the um, the work that Fussell O'Neill has started. They presented that work on the village flooding uh, project, and we'll be dovetailing that work with some of this larger work as well, and vice versa. So there should be a good complement of efforts um, on, on those fronts. Uh, so those are the three things I wanted to, uh, to highlight for you this evening. Thank you. Um, okay, so with that, um, I guess may have um, a motion. Oh, you have the, the, the wording. Well, you can do okay. that. Uh, a motion to end the public session, uh, enter into executive session, not to return to public session, under Mass General Laws Section 30A, uh, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to pending litigation involving unauthorized use of a right of way. And not return. Did you say that I, already? I said that once or twice. <laughs> Second. Okay, moved by Ann Harrison, seconded by Brian Solacy. Roll call vote. John Brown? Yes. Brian Solacy? Yes. Kathy Bellotta? Yes. Ann Harrison? Yes. Becky Jake says yes. Okay. Thank you. Good night, Ron.